Good evening and welcome to the COVID-19 update on Channels Television. I'm Millicent Walker. Here are some of the highlights this hour. The scorecard of President Mohamed Buhari's administration are talking points to the healthcare sector. Lagos celebrates health workers as Edo government warns against politicization of COVID-19. And Greece relaunches its tourism industry to open its doors to visitors from 29 countries. The response to the COVID-19 pandemic globally has generated unprecedented collaboration between various professions and scientific disciplines, especially improvement in science, epidemiology, data and information technology. In Nigeria, in less than four months, the Nigeria Center for Disease Control has expanded its molecular laboratories from four to 28 and more underway across the Federation. The coronavirus has emphasized the importance of using sound quality improvement methods to deliver excellent safe care to every patient every time while protecting the healthcare workforce. But even the best healthcare systems have buckled under the weight caused by the SARS-CoV-2 strain. While some experts say Africa seemed to be spared the worst in terms of its low fatality rate from COVID-19 due to the age demography of residents in the region, it is time for all hands to be on deck to deploying innovative practices, employing strategic prioritization to improve the healthcare sector across board. In 24 hours, five deaths were recorded as a result of COVID-19, bringing the total death toll from the virus to 259 after the NCDC confirmed 182 cases of COVID-19. The total number of cases in the country now stands at 8,915 cases, while 2,592 patients have recovered. According to the center, 35 states and the FCT have recorded confirmed cases of COVID-19 except Cross River State. A look at the breakdown of the figures by region shows that Lagos in the southwest has 3,331 active cases, maintaining the highest number of cases at 4,123. And this is after recording 47 deaths and discharging 745 patients. Kano State is the highest in the northwest, the second highest in the country, with 939 cases. It has made 139 recoveries and sadly lost 41 uh, patients. The FCT in the north central region maintains the third highest figure with 535 cases. Bornu leads in the northwest, or rather northeast, with 258 cases. Edo in the south south with 240, and Ebony in the southeast has 40. Confirmed cases. Today, May 29, the All Progressives Congress led administration of President Mohamed Buhari clocks one year in its second four year term and the fifth year of the government in office. The date used to be observed as Democracy Day in Nigeria, marking the day the military handed over power to an elected civilian government in 1999 and the beginning of the longest uninterrupted civilian rule in the country's history since independence. That, however, changed in 2018 after President Buhari declared June 12 as the new Democracy Day to honor the late businessman and politician Moshud Abiola, who emerged winner of the presidential election of June 12, 1993, but which result was nullified by the military government under General Ibrahim Babangida. In the meantime, the presidency has been giving its scorecard in the past five years, insisting that it has performed well in areas in which the administration promised change, and that is tackling insecurity, reviving the economy, and fighting corruption. So frontline health workers in the midst of this pandemic is part of his uh, one year in office anniversaries. Frontline health workers in Lagos State have received wow. recognition yeah. for their contributions in the fight against the coronavirus pandemic as part of the one year anniversary of the administration of the governor of Lagos State. Mr. Babajide Songolu acknowledged the role of health workers while expressing confidence that Lagos will come out strong in the battle against COVID-19. We couldn't have also done it by ourselves alone, meaning not only the 27 
but the entire 377 primary health facilities who are also part of your front line are doing all of the case searching and all of the sample collections they were even using for our COVID-19 response. So I want to thank all of you, thank all of them that are not even here with us this morning, the primary health workers, the health officials, the, all of our staff at the 27. Well, by next two weeks, we'll be opening two more, so it will go to 29. The MCC in Ekwe and the MCC in Badagri will join um, the League of uh, 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 Health um, Facilities that are ready to go in. And I want to thank everyone. I want to thank everyone in this very important sector for staying and believing in this government and for holding forth for us. I want to say that you are just a, a part of that and we're using it as a point of contact for others to see what government can do and what government would want to continue to show its level of appreciation to each and every one of you. So I want to thank you. We're indeed happy that we can do this to you this morning. And we're saying that whilst we continue to push the narrative around COVID-19, we believe that we will surmount it. We believe that we have a team that is dedicated at ensuring that this pandemic blows over when it will, we will all be here to, 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 to see to the end of it. Well, it is congratulations from Lagos State Government. It is caution from the chairman of the technical committee of the COVID-19 task force and deputy governor of Edo State, Mr. Philip Shaibu. He says those politicians who are resorting to using the pandemic as a campaign tool should stop. Mr. Shaiba was speaking today at a COVID-19 prevention government. workshop at the Government, government House, Benin City, Chairman. the Edo State Capital. For some of our people that are turning this to a political thing, I know Edo is very soon we will be going to politics. Please and please, my appeal to you is that don't play politics with COVID-19. Don't play politics with COVID-19 because you don't know if you are going to be the next hit if you don't observe social distance. For us as a state, we will not mix politics with COVID-19. Some persons make all sorts of statements in the name of politics. The life of our people is more important to us than the election. Election will come and go, but our people will remain. And we need them to be alive, to be able to even vote. We need us to be alive, to even to uh, make ourselves available to be voted for. Let's talk about the healthcare sector and how we can improve it. Joining us from Abuja studios is Dr. Titi Lokwe Obilade. She's an epidemiologist and she joins us now. Thank you for joining us on the program. I'd like to begin by asking about our healthcare system. If it is a result of inconsistent policies of government over the years, or perhaps of doing the same thing and not getting any different results, or rather putting uh, the wrong policies in place. Thank you for having me. Um, a lot of things go into what we presently have in our situation. First of all, let's look at the budget. How much of our gross domestic product do we give to our healthcare system? We give less than 5%. Um, WHO though acts as a guideline, assumes we should give like 5% minimum, but we've been giving less than 5%. And over the years, it's been getting less and less. And then if we look at certain indicators of our health system, we look at the infrastructure, we look at the resources, the human resources as well. How does it compare to others around us, other African countries? Um, we see that there's always a large room for improvement. If uh, our healthcare system was a, a foil tank that was full before, it's no longer full. It's like almost running on empty, you know, and it runs on two spheres. We have those that can afford to have a full tank when they go, that's the elitist side, and then those that are impoverished who cannot even afford to access our healthcare system. So we have a lot of input 
Okay, from the input, we also have our processes, and then we have the outcome. Right now, the input that we have put into our healthcare system is diminished, is less than what is supposed to be. Granted, we have a huge population, 200 million approximately, you know, and in like in the next 30 years, we'll be going to the third most populous nation in the world. So we do have our challenges. And so this is the time to actually build on the inputs that will build up the processes to give us the desired outcomes. So when we look at certain indicators that can help us, we look at our maternal mortality rates. We look at our infant um, death rates. All these things are too high. You can, you can, like you can imagine 800 women dying out of 100,000 people just because they have put to bed or because they are pregnant. So these are some of indicators that tells us that Nigeria is not where it's supposed to be. And then when we look at the human resources, let's talk about our hazard allowances, okay? Um, the doctor, just for the African nation alone, if you look at places like Syria alone, Liberia, what they get for hazard is about 60% much higher than what we are getting. You know, let's say we are getting 5,000 naira for hazard, and they are getting like times 60% of that. So the mor morale is not there. And then we graduate, like maybe we have registered doctors, like 80,000 registered doctors. And then more than half of that are overseas, UK, US, um, S Saudi Arabia. So we're just producing them, but they are not staying because we have not put in the things in place for them to stay. And not only that, the insurance. We have to, we have a, you have a universal insurance health scheme. You know, like I said, if we have a health system like a fuel tank, it can be full for those who can afford it. But for those who cannot afford it, it's running on empty, almost on reserve. So we need to bridge that chasm. We need to, by the processes that we put in, these are the things we can put there. The insurance scheme, we have the universal health insurance scheme. Okay, it's, it's, it's getting there, but it has not reached there. And then the informal sector, okay, the vulcanizer, how can they tap into it? Do they have a community-based insurance scheme? So that every, even for those who get a regular paycheck, they are like one major health condition away from poverty. A major health a condition comes to them, and they're, um, they're impoverished. They have to go and, if they have a house, put it, put, put it for sale, you know? And this is not how it's supposed to be. So when emergencies like we have a pandemic comes, where is the resource to gather it? Because what has been inside, the input, like I said, is not sufficient, but the process is to give us the desired outcome. So we need to work on our inputs. And those inputs that we look at the human resources, the infrastructure on ground, and then the government. What is the government putting? We have this, uh, what we call the Human Development Index. When we have the Human Development Index, it measures certain things and ranks the countries from those who are most developed and then least developed. And it looks at the life expectancy. It looks at the educational level. It looks at the infrastructure on ground. So Nigeria is coming like, you know, 159th. You know, and if you look at the countries that's like at the top, we see something like Norway. Let's look at, look at their indices for health. They have like 10% of their gross domestic product for, for health alone. So the difference is clear. So we really have to work on our input. The input that we need to have, we need to explain it to our leaders because we can't always blame our leaders because there's so many ways that they are stretched. Education is there asking, you know, defense is there asking, but with health. Like There's also funding challenges. Well, you've spoken crisis, extensively about this, and we'd really like to appreciate your insights and analysis on this very important issue. Um, thank you so much, Dr. Titilo Puebilade, an epidemiologist, joining us uh, from Abuja Studios. Thanks for having me. Still to come, we have more on the global COVID-19 response when we return. Welcome back. The National Human Rights Commission, NHRC, is making a strong case for the Amadjuri children in Nigeria. While well, the commission has believed that, as it stands now, their rights are grossly infringed upon. In an advisory issued by the Executive Secretary of the Commission, they believe that the children are exposed to increased vulnerabilities and risks, including death, trafficking, 
kidnapping if they are rehabilitated uh, by the northern governors. Quoting the 1999 constitution as it relates the child's rights, the African Charter on Rights and Welfare of Children and other human rights instruments relating to the protection of the rights of a child, the commission concludes that the northern governors must develop a multi-sectoral program of action to transfer, return and rehabilitate the Almagiri children. The commission warns that the current move by the governors of relocating the children is not in their best interests. In Benue State, the government, in collaboration with COVID, a coalition of private sector donors, has commissioned a 100-bed facility in the Makodi Treatment Centre. The Benue State Deputy Governor, Benson Abono, who leads the State Action Committee on COVID-19, commended the COVID team for leading indigenous private sector efforts in the fight against the pandemic. We're having more states with the latest efforts at stopping the spread of COVID-19. In Ogun State, the governor, Dakwa Biodun, has announced a new ease of lockdown regime starting from the 1st of June from Monday through Friday, 6 a.m. to 8 p.m. each day, with a total lockdown on Saturdays and Sundays of each week. While briefing journalists during the weekly update on the coronavirus pandemic in the state, the governor appreciated residents for their understanding and the need to continue to adhere strictly with the laid down directives on physical distancing, face masks, among others. The Abongi State Government says so far the state has taken 1,472 samples for coronavirus tests in the state and 40 have come out positive. The state governor, David Mahi, while briefing journalists, said that out of the 40 cases, eight have been treated and discharged, while 32 active cases are still under treatment at the centre. The state government disclosed the approval of the General Hospital in Abakaliki local government area to be a treatment centre and that the sum of 80 million naira has been mapped out to renovate the General Hospital hospital in the next 10 days. And in Katsina, Governor Mino Masari has declared Fridays as free lockdown days and approved for the temporary lifting of ban of uh, Jumat prayers and Sunday church services across the 34 local government areas of the state. The governor has also lifted the ban on interlocal uh, government travel across the state. The easing of lockdown order is to take effect from Friday, 29th of May, 2020. And in the studio here in Lagos, Dr. Oluwa Damilola Mati, a public health physician, joins us now. Welcome to the program. Thank you very much. I'd like to first ask you about some of the measures we're seeing state governments take, like you just heard Katsina State saying um, lockdown ease, but this is for, you know, Friday prayers and then Sunday services. Does that give you concern? Oh, yes, that does. Um, because those are congregations where you have large numbers of people. So I think that would be premature at this point. Um, how do you tell who and who should come to church? How do you tell who and who should go to the mosque? Even if you wear your masks, there's still, there's still surfaces to touch and all that. How do you ensure people are hand washing or sanitizing their hands effectively? And those services take at least an hour. So you're going to put a large number of people together for at least one hour. I don't think that is... Um, that is safe for now. Okay. Let's look at the rapid diagnostic test kits. Um, the NCDC has said WHO has not validated that. We're having some state governments say that they've, you know, received some of these test kits. Um, also, the, I think, Medical Laboratories Association are saying that it's not been validated for use. But we still need to ramp up testing. How do we bridge that gap? Yes. So um, the DG of the NCDC has already said that um, they've procured about 100,000 tests. So um, the government, the NCDC, is trying to ramp up testing all over the country. And again, the, for the rapid diagnostic tests, they haven't been validated. So even the one that, um, was, um, that they were working on in America, on validation in America, can only give about 50% accuracy, which means that if you run 10 tests, five, you know, may go all right. So at the end of the day, you need to have tests that are very sensitive and very specific tests that will tell you if somebody has COVID-19, they do have COVID-19. If they do not have COVID-19, then they really do not have COVID-19. You don't want to make mistakes along the line. You don't want to send somebody to an isolation center and then come back and say, oh, sorry, we did a PCR, the polymerase chain reaction test, and then it is negative. And the PCR is the gold standard. That is the test that should be done 
for COVID-19. That is what tells you a person really has COVID-19 or not. So the journey to fast testing is? To ramp up testing. Um, like what um, the DG has said, once um, more, more tests are available to the labs, then manpower is actually very important at this point because you need people to take the samples. That's where manpower comes in. So get more people, more lab people to be able to take the tests and then um, oh. get the results. All right. We appreciate your time, Thank Dr. You so Madame Lola Mati, public health much. physician. Thank you for talking to us. Thank you. Greece has listed 29 countries from where it will accept visitors as of June 15, as the Greek government looks to mitigate some of the financial damage from the coronavirus pandemic. The Greek tourism ministry says travelers from the permitted countries will be able to enter Greece on direct flights to Athens and to the northern city. Hotels opened in Austria today in a further easing of the country's lockdown restrictions. For now, they're only open to citizens, but there are hopes that foreign tourists will be able to visit once the borders with neighboring countries open in mid-June. In Scotland, people are now allowed to meet friends and family again. But first, Minister Nicola Sturgeon urges caution and calls on people to maintain social distancing measures. Turkey has also relaxed some measures, resuming some mass prayers at a limited number of mosques after a break of more than two months. The country has suspended public prayers, limited travel and closed shops and restaurants. However, the government has started to ease the measures amid a slowdown in infections and deaths. Greece has announced that it will open its doors to visitors from 29 countries from June 15, as it tries to relaunch its tourism industry. However, those countries do not include the UK, Italy, Spain and France, which have been badly hit by the pandemic. Hundreds of schools in South Korea have closed due to a spike in infections, just days after they reopened to millions of children. Most of the new cases are in Seoul. It comes after officials reported the highest daily rise in new infections in more than two months. <laughs> A message from the NCDC is that face masks are to be used as an additional layer of physical distancing while out for essential services. You can find the latest guide on their website as the centre continues to work closely with states, setting up treatment centres, training health workers to manage COVID-19 patients to recovery. The WHO website has the latest update on the global response to the COVID-19 uh, pandemic, it has practical guidance for strategic action. You can take a closer look at some of the numbers um, across uh, the continent in real time. Also, ChannelsTV.com, our website, has more updates. You can find the latest on the pandemic in Nigeria and across the world, plus other stories uh, all at your fingertips. That is ChannelsTV.com. Thank you for watching. I'm Melissa Antonwoka. Another update comes your way again at 9. And so even though the weekend is here, please remember to avoid mass gatherings.